The 55-gallon or 208-liter drum is commonly used for storing and shipping hazardous materials. In fact, Chemtrek estimates that over 30% of the hazardous materials incidents reported to them involve drums. A wide variety of hazardous materials are stored and transported in drums, often without proper labeling or safe care. Walking through any chemical storage warehouse, you may find drums containing flammables, combustibles, corrosives, poisons, oxidizers, and flammable solids. Several different types of drums are used to hold hazardous materials. The most common are made of steel, stainless steel, plastic, or fiber. Plastic drums are manufactured by forming molten polymer in a mold. They either have a closed top with an unremovable lid or an open top with a removable lid that is held in place with a metal locking ring. The typical metal drum is comprised of a single piece of steel hot rolled into a cylindrical shape. The top and bottom may be welded in place or the top may just be clamped in place for easier access to the product. The lip around the top and bottom of a drum is called the rim or chime. Both steel and fiber drums may have steel rims to reinforce the top and bottom. Most metal and plastic 55-gallon drums have a vent and a right-handed screw cap called a bung located on the top. In this program, we will show you how to control leaks in low-pressure drums. We will focus on the 55-gallon drum, but most of the techniques will work equally well on smaller or larger capacity drums. It is important that you practice the skills that are demonstrated in this program. Plugging and patching requires hands-on training to fully prepare you to respond to a containment emergency. The learning objectives are to show basic safety considerations for working with hazardous materials, to outline the major causes of leaks in drums, to examine the features of low-pressure drums and show how to use these features to control leaks, to show basic tools and materials needed to plug and patch drums, to demonstrate plugging and patching techniques, and to demonstrate overpacking techniques. Safety is always the first order of business in hazardous materials response operations. You are well aware of the health hazards at a fire scene. However, hazardous materials present additional hazards, including chemical poisoning, exposure to cancer-causing agents, and the risk of levees, among others. You should remember these three safety rules for handling hazardous materials in drums. First, Never begin plugging and patching operations until you have positively identified the material involved. Because there can be many different materials in a single shipment or even on the same pallet in a storage area, be sure to identify all materials in the near vicinity. Okay. Maybe we'll get a the second rule is to always wear proper personal protective equipment when you're working on drums containing hazardous material. Toxic chemicals and highly corrosive materials require specialized PPE and tools. If you don't have them, call for assistance from someone who does. The third safety rule is to call for technical help if you're uncertain about the situation. And looks like we have two barrels on their sides. Stand by for further information on the placards. Get answers before you go in. Remember, if you don't know, don't go. The primary causes of leaks in drums are puncture, pressure, impact damage, and deterioration. Many puncture leaks are caused by forklifts in storage or shipping areas. Punctures may also be caused by the drum being placed on a sharp object, such as a nail sticking up from the floor of a truck or rail car or some other surface. Pressure can cause drums to burst or tear, Pressure buildup can result from an external heat source 
or from a chemical reaction inside the drum. Drums with severe pressure damage are not safe, and no attempt should be made to plug, patch, or move them. Impact damage can occur when drums fall or are crushed in a transportation incident. In such a situation, turn the drum so the breech is above the product. Move the drum to a safe area as long as this can be done without exposing responders to risk. Take care to prevent spilled contents from flowing into sewers or water sources. While some larger facilities have drains that flow to holding tanks for containing spilled material, smaller facilities may not. Deterioration is often caused by rust and corrosion. Deterioration leaks may just be from tiny holes, but there may be many in one drum. This could indicate a large weak area in the drum. Old dump sites are prime locations to find this type of leaking drum. Extremely corrosive products normally would be stored in drums with special features to eliminate or reduce possible corrosion damage. However, you may encounter deterioration when a highly corrosive material is put into an unprotected drum. To be prepared to stop leaks in drums rapidly, you must have the correct tools and materials on hand. Most of the equipment needed to plug and patch drums is available from hardware or auto supply stores or can be easily made. At a minimum, a basic kit will be required, but an expanded kit will be helpful in incidents requiring extensive plugging and patching or multiple leaks. Having wedges on hand in a wide range of sizes, shapes, and materials will facilitate your ability to quickly act on drum breaches. Whenever you purchase or make a kit, evaluate how compatible the materials are with the structural material of various drums and the hazardous materials in your area. For example, some rubber and soft pine plugs can deteriorate in some chemicals, and wood wedges can be fire starters in some corrosives. Wrap wooden plugs with parafilm or dip them in paraffin before putting them in your repair kit. The film and wax will act as gaskets when you drive the plugs into the drum. Never use paraffin-coated plugs with corrosives. A kit should also include epoxy putty and patching tapes, such as rescue tape, aluminum tape, and duct tape. For metal drums containing highly flammable, highly volatile, or oxidizing materials, you will also need non-sparking tools. Taking the time to prepare a fully stocked response kit will greatly facilitate your ability to quickly control a leaking drum. The first and easiest method of controlling leaks in drums is to use the features of the drum. Be sure you know what product is in the drum before you proceed. Because drums are generally not pressurized, you may be able to use gravity to stop the leak, provided this can be done without putting responders at undue risk. One method is to roll the drum to the desired position so the breech is above the level of product. Secure the drum so that it will not move and begin spilling again. Another method is to upright the drum if the drum is not full and safety considerations permit it. If the drum is full or if raising it would put you at risk, a forklift operator can raise the drum. Other features of drums that can be used to stop the leak are the bung, the vent, and the rim clamp. A leak at the site of these features may be stopped by tightening or replacing the leaking piece. Use a bung wrench or long-handled screwdriver to twist the bung or vent clockwise. Only non-sparking tools should be used if the leak occurs in a drum containing oxidizing, highly volatile, or highly flammable materials. If you do not have non-sparking tools, call for technical assistance. If the leak occurs at the rim clamp, Realign the clamp over the end of the drum 
and tighten it. The purpose of plugging and patching is temporary leak control, not drum repair. The objective is not to achieve a long-term solution, but to employ a rapid containment technique that will secure a leaking drum. The technique used for plugging and patching often depends on the size and shape of the hole, the product, and the drum material. Small holes can be plugged using a number of alternatives. One effective option is a screw and washer. Use a sheet metal screw and one or more washers. The washers are necessary to keep the screw from working its way into the drum. It will be more effective to also use a rubber or neoprene gasket between the washer and the drum to make a tight seal. Small holes can also be sealed with epoxy resin compounds. However, the effectiveness of this technique can be limited by material compatibility, breach size, and internal pressure. Rubber plugs can be used with some products, though some corrosives can deteriorate some kinds of rubber. Vulcanized rubber repair kits can be easily obtained from a plumbing or auto parts store. A variety of small wood plugs can also be used. Golf tees make effective plugs for small holes. To secure larger holes, such as those caused by forklifts, you will need to apply a plug with a patch. To do so, First, stop the flow of material, if possible, by positioning the hole above the level of product. Next, prepare the surface of the drum. Clean the area to be patched by wiping it with a rag. If the product in the drum is not flammable, run a wire brush over the area to remove all paint and dirt. Select an appropriately sized wedge and tap it into the hole with a hammer or rubber mallet so it is securely in place. Be careful to not drive the wedge completely inside the drum. Pack epoxy putty into the gaps around the wedge or a wooden dowel to create a tight seal. If the drum will be overpacked, cut off the protruding portion of the wedge so it is flush with the side of the drum. Depending on product compatibility, apply aluminum, rescue, or duct tape over the wedge. Cover the entire area, extending the tape at least two inches or 50 millimeters beyond the edges of the wedge on all sides. Finally, apply epoxy over the tape and smooth it so it creates an even surface with the drum. Sometimes a drum will have a large irregular gash or hole that cannot be easily plugged. In such a case, both commercially available and homemade drum clamps can patch holes up to about three inches or 75 millimeters in diameter. To make your own drum clamps, you will need sheet metal, neoprene gasket material, large clamp straps, and epoxy glue. Cut the sheet metal into various sizes for different hole sizes. Leave the neoprene material in one piece or several large pieces and cut it to size as needed at the seam. Include several large clamp straps that are long enough to fit amply around 55-gallon drums. You should also prepare a few shorter clamp straps for smaller containers. In order to apply a drum clamp to a hole, you must first prepare a drum patch. Select or cut a piece of sheet metal large enough to cover the breech. Glue the neoprene gasket to the metal backing. Place the patch over the hole. Put the clamp strap around the drum and tighten the clamp. Put a steady the barrel. Yeah. Once a leaking drum has been plugged and patched, it must be put into a recovery or overpack drum for containment. If the patched drum is upright and it is safe to do so, overturn the drum so it is upside down. Lower the recovery drum over the patched drum. Then raise the unit to an upright position. 
This prevents the patched drum from being upside down inside the recovery drum, which would pose a sampling or pumping problem. If circumstances permit, lay the overpack lid on the ground upside down and overturn the patch drum onto it. When you lower the overpack drum, simply twist it onto the lid to secure the contents. Then upright the drums. If the patch drum is on its side and you have the resources, you can create a fulcrum underneath the patch drum with a board, an axe, or a pike pole. Raise the bottom of the drum by pressing the top rim to the ground and work the overpack drum in place. Or if the patch drum is lightweight, simply raise the bottom end up over the lip of the recovery drum and slide the patch drum in. The V-roll offers another method of overpacking a horizontal drum. Place the drums in a 45 degree V formation with the bottom of the patch drum laying on the inside rim of the overpack drum. Roll the drums toward each other so the patch drum rolls into the overpack drum. Regardless of the method of overpacking used, be careful to avoid bumping the patched area as much as possible. Note that the weight of the patch drum can pose a safety issue to responders. If the contents are too heavy to lift manually, mechanical equipment, such as a hoist or a forklift with drum handling attachments, may be required to load the patch drum. After securing the lid, clearly mark the overpack container to identify the materials inside. A recovery drum cannot be transported without its contents being properly marked. Once properly packaged, the material will be ready for transport as needed. In this program, we've shown you the features of the 55-gallon drum and the main causes of drum leaks. We have presented safety considerations you should remember when responding to hazardous material situations involving drums. We have shown you basic and extended kits required for plugging and patching operations. We have demonstrated a variety of methods for how to plug and patch drums using a variety of tools and materials. And we have demonstrated a variety of methods of overpacking a patched drum. Remember, safety is always your first priority. Know what the product is before you go in and carefully evaluate your protective gear, your equipment, and your training to be sure you can perform the operation safely. Plugging and patching techniques should be considered only as first aid techniques and are only temporary, but they are an important component of leak control and containment. It is your training and practice that will prepare you for acting quickly and safely if you are called out to plug and patch drums containing hazardous materials. Take time to become proficient in these skills. Thank you.